Welcome to this week's edition of Coach Prep. Coach Don and I are here in the Cherokee Batting Range Podcast Studio getting ready to record episode number 215. We're, today we're going to talk about how we learn skills by painting a picture in our mind and repetition and not from uh, just talking about it. Before we get into that topic, let's talk about our sponsors. First, the Anderson Bat Company. Everything Fast Pitch is very proud to have Anderson Bat Company as our presenting sponsor. Anderson Bat Company is using the latest and greatest bat technology to corner the market in the fast pitch world. They have the minus nine rocket tech, the minus 10 carbon, and the minus 11 carbon light. Anderson Bat Company is using this technology to put a high performing bat in the hands of hitters that really know the difference between a good bat and a great bat. We're also working with Anderson to provide a discount for all of our listeners. Go to the Anderson Bat Company website and order your bats, use the EFP20 discount, which is for everything fast pitch, and you'll get a 20% discount. And make sure you take advantage of that EFP20 discount. I want you to save that additional 20%. You know, we've talked about it uh, on everything fast pitch recently. The Christmas is just around the corner. It's a great way for you to get your kid a new bat, new glove, um, something else from Anderson, and save that additional 20%. And of course, uh, that helps to support the podcast at the same time. Also, we would love for you to become a patron. Go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. If uh, you're in a position where you can help us, if you see value in what we're doing, we would love to have you come on board as a patron. Uh, things are definitely going in the right direction for the podcast, but we need to keep that momentum going because uh, you know, it's important for us to get to the point where we're in a break-even situation. We're so close to it now, we want to make sure that it happens. So, Don, one of the things that we've talked about in several different ways over the years between uh, coach prep and everything fast pitch is that... Too many of us as coaches think that if we talk about something, if we just use words to describe a skill or something that we want our players to be able to perform, that somehow talking about it is going to fill the bill. And I've been arguing for a long time, and I've been saying as long as I can remember, that talking is not practicing. And for all the coaches that spend, you know, let's say they're out at practice for two hours, but 45 minutes of that time or an hour of that time is them explaining something, talking about something. Um, that we're headed for a disaster. But it happens all the time, right? As we talk about this stuff, this is a skill that we've done for decades. You know, I've thrown a ball for decades. I've fielded a ball for decades. So I just, you know, as we describe things to people, we kind of assume that they're just going to get it. But many of the students and the players that are playing softball are very new to it. They haven't spent decades throwing and fielding and anticipating, you know, all the things that are happening in the game. and you know, not too long ago, we went and did this thing. It's called iFly. It's like a simulated skydiving thing. And, you know, they send you through a little course and they talk about how you can maneuver and do things. And, and I feel like I'm pretty athletic and, you know, I can do this stuff. And for them to, to tell me about it and then for me to go jump in this tube where, you know, the wind is soaring by you and you get out there and you have to do all these little adjustments and manipulate your body to keep from flying into the wall or whatever. Right. And do all these things that they described to me. It's so different to actually, you know, be trying to actually do it. So, but after a period of time and after a number of reps, I was able to get it and it, and it made more sense. So the actual participation in it was more important than, you know, somebody spending an hour telling me about it. Right. So that's kind of what we're sharing. Right. Well, the, uh, Coaching trap that we all fall into is that we think we're great explainers. And by explaining something that somehow a player is going to be able to then take that information, take those words, and turn it into a physical skill. And there's tons and tons of science that tells us that that just isn't true, that it doesn't really work that way. That's why drills and things like that are so valuable. You know, there's a couple of examples that you can look at that are really, you know, obvious. In the military, they do drills for things like walking. Right? I mean, they march over and they march and, and they march and, over. and they march in unison and they're all on step and, you know, they do all kinds of, you know, drills where they handle their weapon or tie their shoes or make their bed or whatever it is to create that uh, ability to do those things and to be able to call on that knowledge of conditioning your mind to be able to do specific things when the stuff hits the fan, when things start to go crazy there's a, a major battle going out on the mat, battlefield. The, uh, the, the unit's not marching in straight lines in step as they're fighting this battle, but 
what they've learned from doing those drills sets them up to be successful when, you know, crazy stuff happens. You know, there's so many of those kinds of examples in the world where we use a routine of training my mind and body to do something very, very specific that sets us up for success. And in our game, the idea that we talked about that, we, you know, we talked that over at practice is something that we've got to get past because the Players are not, and especially younger players, but I don't think even college level kids are going to be able to hear you give an in-depth you know, dissertation about you know, what to do with your swing and then turn that into hitting better. It, it makes me smile, Tori, as you're describing it, because I can vividly hear coaches saying, didn't we talk about this? Right. We just yeah. talked about this on Wednesday. Right. Right. Yeah. Let's just throw this out there. There's no nice way to say it. Coaches say that really loud all the time at the ballpark right after their team just screws to up. Separate them from. Right. So, so I'm going to say up. really yeah. loud at practice. Uh, hey, we just worked on that in practice, so everybody at the field knows that we just worked on it, so that somehow coach it's not it. my fault coach as did the his coach part. Yeah. That, that we just screwed up. So I think some of that's a, a defense mechanism as much as it's anything else. A couple of things that kind of tie into this. So there's there's a couple of things that are, are super important. One thing I learned when I first started doing public speaking is that you can tell a story two different ways. You can just basically, you know, recount the facts, talk about the particulars, or you can tell a, a like a personal story, a vivid story that kind of ties things together. So we can talk about doing this with your hands in a drill, or we can talk about how, you know, this player started off at this point and she worked on this and led to this outcome later on. And this is how she grew as a player. And this is the, what she learned from doing these specific drills and how these drills changed her and made her better. Well, the second one's going to make a bigger and much more lasting impression because it kind of gives everybody a picture in their mind. So instead of just the words going in their mind, they've got images, they've got visual, you know, kind of uh, you know, imaginary little pictures dancing around in their head which make it so much more real and so much more useful that I think that's the first thing. So we have to make sure that coaches are, are using that as a tool, trying to make it as vivid and clear and, and you know, painting a picture much more so than just giving the information. No, I think that's great, Tori. And that kind of engages your, your imagination, like you're saying. And right. that, that makes you uh, click in and a lot more likely to get it. Right. So that's nice. And, and the second part of that now is using analogies and tying what you're working on with that player to other real life situations. So one of the things I talk with hitters about all the time is they keep hearing over and over and over again from people in their lives that you need to be on time when you're hitting. You need to be on time. And I've always thought that being in time was a better way of thinking about it. In time to me means I get there a little bit early. So I've kind of got a second to kind of catch my breath and get organized versus on time has this feeling of rushing there right at the last second and everything's hurried and, and a little bit out of control. And that's an example that I use all the time. So I, I, you know, we talked about this with a player just yesterday in a lesson. If you had to take a really important test tomorrow and it starts at nine o'clock, are you going to try to hit the parking lot at 8.59 so you can sprint in and dive in the desk right before the bell rings? Or you got the opportunity to get there five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes early, sip your coffee, drink your magic mind, and have a chance to, you know, to zero in and, and really focus in and be comfortable and calm, cool, and collected when the test starts. I mean, I know which one I'd prefer, but unfortunately, because of the terms we're using and the ways we're saying things, kids are picking the, the other one too often. Yeah, and again, like you said, if that feels rushed, if it feels pressured, then that's not a really good environment for our hitters right. either, right? And so, so the, the moral of the story today is we have to stop talking, thinking that just the words themselves are delivering the message. We've got to paint a picture. We've got to make it something that can be relatable to something that they've seen, something that they've done, something that they've already practiced. And then we need to practice it enough and rep it enough and, and drill it enough that when they're imagining it, they're imagining in their own mind, well, the two weeks ago at practice, when we were doing this in practice, I did it this way and it worked great. Now I need to kind of recapture that feeling and tap back into the picture I have in my mind, the image I have in my mind of me doing it well because I've done it well in the past. I was going to say, and a lot of the skills that, that we need for our game, Tori, are things that are reactionary. We've got to have formed a, a habit of doing things a certain way and that doesn't happen after 
description or a lecture by the coach and then a, a one time out there for a dry run and okay, now you've got it, right? This is how you do the rundowns. You're going to be perfect on the weekend. It's got to be a habit. It's got to be something that we groom and train and cover and recover and emphasize and do again. Yeah. So. And and the more we do that, the the less times we need to fall back on the coach's crutch of, we just worked on that. <laughs> and coaches, if you're finding yourself saying that often, if you're out there coaching your team on game day, and you have to be yelling at the top of your lungs, what the heck, we just worked on that? You didn't work on it enough. Not enough, apparently. Yeah, right? you didn't yeah. work on it enough. So that's kind of the, the best way we can sum it up and, and use those tools to do a better job. Because uh, obviously talking is part of coaching. Sure. But talking effectively and using what you're saying in a way that's going to really help players versus just throwing words at them is two really different things. No, I love it. That's a good All message. Right. All right, so that's going to wrap up number 215. Please make sure that you support our sponsors, the Anderson Bat Company. If you're in a position where you can, please become a patron. Go to patreon.com slash everythingfastpitch. Reach out to us at everythingfastpitch at gmail.com or fastpitchprep at gmail.com. Questions, ideas, topics, suggestions, anything you want us to talk about. Coach Don and I love talking about stuff that uh, you bring to the table uh, because then we know for sure we're talking about things that are of interest to all of our listeners. Also, make sure that you go to the fastpitchprep.com website. That's where you're going to order your Square Cuts training discs. You also have access to the YouTube channel and the blog post. There's a ton of information there that you can use um, in planning better practices and having better drills to use to help your players play better and, and make better decisions. So for Coach Don McKinley and our producer, Stan Lewis, this is Coach Tory saying thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next week.